Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of No Frontiers Japan. My name is Luca and today I'm going to be ta not taking I'm you know you're not going anywhere. I'm not taking you anywhere. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know, 10 seconds into my very first take, I like mess it up completely. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Anyways, should we for practice keep rolling or cut? No, cut. I keep cut. Rolling. We'll delete it anyway. <laughs> delete it anyway. Yeah, true. Okay. Or not. I mean, embarrassing is good. And, well, maybe I should introduce myself a bit more. Um, I said my name is Luca. I'm actually a foreigner in Japan. And I love to explore and eat and do fun stuff. And, ah, yeah, yeah. Over the last month or more, I've actually been gathering a lot of high-end hardware so I can build a high-quality video editing workstation so I can especially process 4k video which I can bring to the channel so in order to obviously make those videos I'm gonna need to build a machine well I mean especially in order to edit this video that you're watching I would have had to have built it right so um, yeah with that in mind um, I guess I have to build this Now, a lot of the current footage that I do have, it's actually in 4K, whether we're talking camera, drone, etc. But I would like to provide across all devices content in the future that's 4K or possibly even higher. So I'm just simply future-proofing my system, but at the same time, I'm increasing my current video editing performance. If you're a video editor yourself and you've tried doing things like rendering a video or simply scrolling through your timeline on a system that wasn't designed to handle the quality of video that you've inputted, then you know how painfully impossible that can be. So without further ado, let's unbox all of this because it's Christmas. No, it's not. There we go. Pretty much everything is unboxed except for the monitor, the surge protector, but for the most part, this is everything I need for my setup. Now, most of these components are actually going to go inside this case, which is a 4000D airflow case from Corsair. Now, quick note on pricing. Most of these components are not Japanese, so there is a high import tax. You also have a middleman system in Japan that also raises the price, plus the value of the Japanese yen is quite low. So, that gives very tremendous increases in the pricing of buying tech. Now, I actually saved, believe it or not, up to 20% on the total cost because I waited until late December, early January before I started buying all my hardware. But unfortunately, yeah, building a PC in Japan is always going to be expensive. Unfortunately, the, the price of these components is not even remotely close to US MSRP. That's the way it is. When it comes to build, building this computer, I honestly, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to take my time. I've never owned a desktop before. 
let alone built one. So I'm going to take my time and read the manuals. I'm going to go nice and slow. I'm going to be really, really boring. You know, I've actually even bought a, an anti-static wrist strap just because, well, I mean, it's winter in Japan. I assume maybe there's more of a risk of static electricity in the, uh, in the building. I don't actually know, but I know motherboards, especially maybe the memory too, storage. I know it maybe can be at a risk of electric shock. So yeah, I don't know. I'm going to take, you know, take every precaution I can. So that's pretty much it. Um, the build is probably going to take me a long time. My beard's going to grow. Um, yeah, I'm expecting maybe 10 plus hours. No, I'm joking. But for you, it won't be because montage. Well, I think everything's hooked up, so here's the moment of truth. Oh yeah. So in the end, it seems like this is a pretty straightforward build. Um, I absolutely love this beautiful tempered glass GPU sag bracket. That's a really nice touch. Well, so much for growing that beard, right?
Well, here's the final product. Not just the PC, but a section of my studio setup as well. Now, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't pretty satisfied with the results. I mean, I think it looks great. I can adjust the lighting and the PC itself tests super well in initial benchmarks. Now, we'll see how it holds up when it comes to overclocking the CPU, the GPU, and maybe even the RAM. Thinking back to when I was doing the build, I was probably most nervous when I was mounting the liquid cooler. Now, it's obviously not a custom loop where you'd have way more points of failure, but still, I mean, putting liquid inside a PC, it feels very counterintuitive. Even now, I'm a little bit uncomfortable having it in there, to be honest, not because of the quality of the product, not because of the quality of my installation, but simply because of where I'm living. Japan is known for its extreme weather and has multiple annual typhoons. In fact, the summers are a literal steam bath and humidity often reaches 99% in areas such as Tokyo. That's crazy. And the effect that this has on my system, well, I mean, I can make an educated guess and say that that would probably not be good. So as a fun little test, I actually bought for $1, believe it or not, this little charcoal dehumidifier and I stuck it in my closet and after three weeks, look at all the moisture that was pulled out of the air. Now I know at least one person will ask and the answer is no. This is not a humidifier. Kirby just loves cup noodle. Going back specifically to the liquid cooler, another tectonic plate size concern of mine is earthquakes. Now, believe it or not, these are a normal part of everyday life in Japan. But if you live in an apartment or work in an office tower, you will literally feel the entire building swaying. It's actually quite unnerving. If these regular earthquakes are capable of knocking items off of shelves, tables, walls, I'm not sure how liquid cooler is going to hold up. I mean, maybe the monitor, I can chain it to the wall, but for a liquid cooler, I don't know what I can do beyond just cross my fingers and hope it doesn't spring a leak. Now, I do want to mention that in between the time when I originally started planning my build and now when I'm releasing the video, technology has progressed really quickly. So if you are a PC enthusiast, no doubt you have a much better build already. Even though this 3060 Ti graphics card is good, but it's not top of the line, I can still do up to 4K gaming on select titles. But because my primary workload is 4K video editing, if I really want to upgrade my system, I can just increase the RAM. Right now it's got 64 gigabytes, but with the two extra slots that are there, I can double it to 128. With all of that being said, if you have any questions, thoughts, or advice, then please share them down in the comments below. If you even think I'm an idiot for putting a liquid cooler inside an expensive system in an earthquake-prone country, then please, don't be shy. Let me know. You might very well be right. Well, now that this is done, I look forward to bringing a ton of great quality content to the channel. Because I combine various forms of footage, I might not be able to release everything in 4K right away. But the sooner I'm able to grow the channel, then the sooner I'm going to be able to upgrade my videography equipment and my cameras. And it's reassuring to know that once I'm able to do that, I have a system that's ready to handle the workload. So whether you learn something new or simply found this video interesting, then please take a second to tap that like button below and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video, which is going to be coming out soon. Minasan domo arigato. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time, right here on No Frontiers.